Sometimes the biggest mistake that new adventure bike riders make is buying an adventure bike in the first place. Hello friends, I'm the Dork in the Road, and today we're going to talk about seven mistakes that new adventure bike riders make. The first one is what I said in the intro. Sometimes the biggest mistake new ADV riders make is buying an adventure bike in the first place. Now I know that sounds mean, so let me explain. I firmly believe, and I know I'm not alone in this belief among those who are adventure slash dual sport riders, that the best, the absolute best way to get started with any type of off-road riding is to not start out on a big, heavy adventure bike. It is very difficult to learn the skills you need to learn and build confidence on a very heavy motorcycle that's intimidatingly heavy, tall, uh, it tips easily, and I can tell you as a person that probably jumped to a big adventure bike too early, I jumped to an Africa Twin, that that was a mistake, and I wish I had spent a little bit more time learning and refining my skills ahead of time. Okay, okay, so how are you supposed to learn to ride adventure bikes without riding an adventure bike? I'll tell you, there's a big caveat here, and that is if this is financially viable for you personally, I know it isn't for everybody, but the best way to get started adventure riding is to buy a dual sport, a lightweight, easy to ride dual sport to build confidence and skills for off-road riding if you intend to take your adventure bike off-road. If you just want to use it as a very comfortable upright touring bike, then maybe this advice is not as useful. But the best way to learn those off-road riding skills that will translate directly to your bigger adventure bike when you get it is to start with a dual sport. Now, depending on where you live, this is more possible than it is in other places. Here in the Pacific Northwest, it is pretty easy to buy a dual sport ride it for a year or two and sell it at a minimal loss or no loss at all. It's pretty easy to pick up a used DRZ or a used 250L or a used WR250R, ride it for a couple years, build those skills, build that confidence, understand the differences between street riding and off-road riding, sell that bike and then move up to a bigger adventure bike. Or the ultimate solution in my opinion is to have both because you've got your long range touring bike that you can take off-road, but you've also got your trail riding, short day trip. I just wanna go out and have fun and not think about it as much. Dual sport, I like having both personally, but I realize that's not necessarily possible for everyone. But I do highly recommend if at all possible, not starting on an adventure bike, but instead starting on a dual sport or even a dirt bike, a smaller off-road motorcycle to build skills and confidence, particularly if it's your first time off-road on a motorcycle on two wheels. The second mistake new adventure bike riders make is not buying gear or not buying the right gear. Now, I'm not saying, and do not hear me saying that you have to go out and buy head-to-toe climb gear. I don't think you even need to buy an ADV specific helmet. You don't have to, you need to have a helmet. But if you're coming from street riding, most of your street gear is fine. You will wanna get better boots. I hammer this point home a lot, so you've probably heard it a few times if you're a fan of the channel, but lower leg injuries are the second most common injury to off-road motorcycle riders. It's really easy to drop the bike on your leg, to stick your foot in an awkward position and twist that ankle. And I highly recommend off-road riding boots, if not full motocross boots, when you're getting started. Other than that, your street gear is probably fine if that's what you have. But if you don't have anything, you're just getting started out, you need to protect yourself. People think, oh, I don't need pads, I don't need knee pads, I don't need elbow pads. Well, those slow speed crashes are pretty common, particularly when you're learning to ride a motorcycle, and they can hurt. And if you don't believe me, just step outside, pause the video, walk out your front door, and just drop from a standing position onto the biggest rock you can find. Just do that. And then come back and tell me in the comments how that went. Now tell me if you would rather have been wearing a $10 or $20 set of knee pads because that happens all the time when you're riding. I crashed two days ago coming back to my house in some slippery mud and thank God I was wearing, wearing? And thank God I was wearing, you know, head to toe gear with elbow and knee protection because I landed on both of those things. Gloves are also very important. Not necessarily so much for the sliding off-road because you're going at slower speeds, but you're gonna land on branches, sharp rocks, uh, blackberry briars if you're in the Pacific Northwest. So get gear, get something on your knees and elbows. That can be the pads in your riding jacket. Your street gear may already have that, but you need something when you start riding off-road. Most touring companies and places where you go to take classes won't even let you participate if you're not wearing all that. Third mistake that I see new adventure riders make is buying way too much bike. You've seen Long way around, you want to ride a big BMW like Charlie Borman and, and Ewan McGregor, and I get it. And, that, and if that is your end goal, good for you. That does not mean you should just run out and buy that motorcycle. 
One, they're super expensive. It's not a great bike to learn on because you're going to be dropping a very expensive, very heavy motorcycle. You're not going to want to do that. You're much better off starting on a cheaper, lighter, used dual sport that's got a few dings and dents on it. But if you get on one of those big bikes and you get out in the backcountry and your skills aren't amazing because you're still a beginner and you drop that thing, picking it up is, uh, is a challenge. I don't know how many times I've heard stories of I blew up my knee or I messed up my back lifting up this big heavy adventure bike that I took off road for the first time. So one big mistake that I think new adventure riders make is buying too much motorcycle. I realize that buying and selling motorcycles is not ideal. It would be great to buy the motorcycle that you're going to end up with, but that's a great way to build bad habits and never build any confidence. The fourth big mistake that I see new ADV riders make is uh, it goes right on top of number three, and that is buying too much bike in the first place and then loading it up with as much crap as they can possibly put on it. And I'm guilty of this, don't get me wrong. Like uh, I've learned this lesson the hard way, which is why I'm trying to share it with you. But you see the guys, the same guys that go out, they buy a brand new 1250 GS and then they gotta get every case that BMW makes. Top case, side cases, the hard cases, that stuff's expensive and then they fill them, they fill them up. And that is all just adding more and more weight and more and more difficulty uh, to an already heavy bike. That stuff is cool, but again, when you're first getting started, you're very likely to drop that motorcycle on those cases and dent them. And then what? You're, you've dented your $2,000 case and or busted it off. I see that all the time. Watch any BDR film. Somebody inevitably dings or hits their, their hard case on a rock and it comes off and they have to fix it with a sledgehammer or something. Buying too much bike and buying too much stuff to go on the bike is a big mistake I see new ADV riders make. And I get it, we wanna be the world travelers, right? You don't get into ADV to not go do ADV things, but I'm just saying, do yourself a favor and work up to that. Your ADV bike is not a truck. If you wanna take that much stuff, go car camping. Motorcycle camping is a little bit different animal. The number five mistake that I see a lot of new ADV riders make, and also just new off-road riders in general, is trying to ride that thing like a street bike. You have to do things differently when you're riding off-road. It is a low traction environment. When you're used to a high traction environment, you ride a bike a certain way, right? But the biggest and most obvious example I can give you is leaning the motorcycle. On the street, you stay parallel with the bike. You and the bike lean together, right? On a motorcycle, you stay perpendicular to the ground because you have limited traction and you're trying to maximize your weight over the maximum contact patch of your motorcycle, which means you lean the bike underneath you. You don't lean with it. It has to move underneath you and that is a little bit more athletic. It requires you to get up off the seat or at least shift on the seat. You don't have to stand all the time, but it's a very different skill set. You ride as far up on the motorcycle as you can off-road, even when you're sitting, elbows out so that you can do the leaning thing and maintain weight on both tires and maintain traction. Traction is the priority, not speed. There's a lot of different things that you do off-road, a different riding style and your street skills can actually hurt you when you have muscle memory and you just try to do those things and the next thing you know you're on the ground because you were doing it incorrectly. So you cannot ride off road like you ride on the street and realizing that is the first step and that is a big mistake that I see new ADV riders make. The number six mistake that I see new ADV riders make is just assuming they can do the hard stuff because they have a great bike and they just jump right in without getting any training. One, I, training is so valuable. I realize it's not an option for everyone, but I can tell you that the two day training sessions that I've done with Ride Adventures, those guys left at the end of the second day as good as I was a year or two into teaching myself. I'm not even exaggerating. Their confidence, their skills, the types of terrain they had tackled at the end of the second day was stuff that I never would have imagined doing in my first year, let alone my second day. Some of those guys had never touched gravel on a motorcycle on the first day, and by the end of the second day, they're tackling rocky, sandy stuff in Central Oregon. It's amazing. So you can really accelerate your ability, your confidence, and your safety by getting some training. And if going and getting training is maybe not financially viable, there's nothing near you, that is totally valid. Uh, but you can get on YouTube. Brett Tax has some great videos that you can learn from. Everride's old stuff is good. I try and share some stuff from time to time that's gonna help you be a better rider. But please, get some training of some kind, whether you're self-taught, whether you are going to a training, whether you're watching it on YouTube, you can't just jump into the hardest stuff I don't want you to learn the hard way. And you know, going fast and, and being uh, balls out can get you through a lot of stuff, but eventually you're gonna run out of talent and be unable to recover. And I don't want you to get to that point. So get some training, 
learn, practice before you go out and tackle the hard stuff. That's a big mistake that I see new riders make. And the seventh mistake that I see new riders make, and this one is maybe a little controversial, but never taking their motorcycles off-road. You bought an adventure bike, and if you bought it to be an upright tour and you want to put street tires on it and just go from one end of the country to the next, you know what, more power to you. I don't judge anyone for using their motorcycle in the way that they see fit, and it pisses me off when other people do. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it sucks that sometimes new ADV riders never get to experience the full range of capabilities of the amazing motorcycles that they've purchased. Personally, I always think about Wolf Rock, which is this amazing landmark that's out here not that far from my home. And the highway, I drove past it on hundreds of times when I was a kid, and even as an adult, and I never even knew it was there because I never got off the road. But once I got off the road, out into the gravel, started exploring, it's like a whole new world opened up to me. And this amazing thousand foot tall landmark is out there and has been the whole time. And I never knew it was there because I never got off the beaten path. Once you're comfortable, I would encourage you as a new ADV rider to think about taking that motorcycle off-road if you get an opportunity. You don't have to go crazy, you don't have to ride hard stuff, you know, well-maintained forest roads are still off-road in my book, and you can just see a lot of cool and amazing stuff and get to a lot of cool and amazing places, and your motorcycle can take you there. So, you know, take advantage of it if and when you get to the point where you feel comfortable, but I do feel like that is maybe a mistake that new ADV riders sometimes don't do. They sometimes don't get to use the full capability of their motorcycle, and that's a shame. That's all I'm saying. So that's seven mistakes that I see new ADV riders make. Let me know what mistakes you commonly see new ADV riders make, or more importantly, what mistakes did you make? Let the community learn from your experiences. Leave that in the comments below. Also, if you're interested in more adventure riding, more dual sport riding, moto camping, hints, tips, and tricks, bike reviews, things things like that, please consider hitting that subscribe button and joining us here on the dork side because I want to be your internet riding buddy and I'm better than your regular riding buddies because I come with a mute button. Also, if you haven't, if you liked the video, if you got something out of it, sure would mean a lot to me if you hit that like button. That really helps out a lot. But for now, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for watching and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. A thank you. Excellent! Yay! Boop. Thank you.